Yeah, hey developers, today we're gonna look at the Vue.js framework for Jamstack websites, Gridsum. We're gonna connect it to a headless CMS, in fact, a Google Sheets, and we're gonna see how that can use to help power our website. So let's begin. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack web developer. I'm also the author of the Vue.js in action, and I'm also a developer. And if you like these type of videos where I deep dive into frameworks, and I deep dive into things like Gridsum, and you like Vue.js or React or Angular, then make sure you click that subscribe button and uh, also click that little bell button and you'll be notified next time I upload a video. All right, so I said at the beginning, we are gonna look at Gridsum. And if you've never used that before, you are in luck. I'm gonna walk you step by step to get Gridsum up and running on a an app and have it connect over to Google Sheets. But you can also have this connect to WordPress, Airtable, anything. You know, there's so many different plugins. When I first reviewed Gridsum, I actually did a few videos on this. They had very few plugins, but right now they have tons. So if you have heard something called Gatsby, this is like the Vue.js equivalent to that. Okay, so I have Visual Studio Code opened up here. And what we first need to do is we'll do the get started. So I'll show you exactly how you get started here. So you'll need to do the installation. And the installation is, of course, you have to have Node.js version 8.3 or higher. If you don't have Node, make sure you go to the nodejs.org website and download it, install it for Windows, Mac, whatever operating system you're on. Or if you're a big fan of Yarn, you can do that too. I like Node and NPM. Then you just run this command to install the CLI. So let's do that. Now I have an empty project open here and I have the terminal open. I'm just going to copy and paste this and it'll install. Cool, okay, so the Gridsum CLI is installed. And you can see here, once you do that, you could just do Gridsum create. I'll make this a little bigger. Gridsum create site. And that will create your site. So let's begin to do that. So I'm gonna do Gridsum create. I'm gonna go YouTube and I'm gonna call it Google Sheets Jamstack. And so that will go ahead and create everything. Now, unlike the Vue CLI or Quasar CLI or Nux CLI, it actually doesn't ask you any questions. It just installs everything for you. And just like the Nux CLI, it gives you some readmes and it, it set up some folders for us. And it's pretty simple. It looks really similar to Nuxt and the way that the directories are set up. You also have, well, let's, let's give it a second and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, cool. So I went ahead and installed and we can just follow the instructions here. We need to change directory to the folder and then run grid some develop and that'll start my local development environment. Now we're not gonna get into building or anything like that, but when it builds, it builds a static site as you would imagine, which, um, which makes it really quick and fast. Okay, cool. So now it's running and let's just take a look at what it looks like if we just follow the link here. Okay, cool, so here is the page right here. This is, it loaded up and working. And you can see we have the navigation at the top, some lore Mipsum, a hello world, and a link to the documentation. You can also see this other link, it's explore GraphQL data. So if we click on this link, this will bring up the GraphQL Explorer, which is neat. So this is, this is essentially how we're going to talk to our data layer. And the way Gridsum works is that you configure plugins and when you configure the plugins, it'll talk to data sources, either local markdowns that you set up inside your project. It could be Google Sheets, like I'm gonna show you today. It could be a WordPress site. It could be Contentful. It could be all these different, these, they call it Jamstack, because we're using JavaScript and, and markup to create data that we can pull and put into our app. And then it pulls it into the GraphQL API. And then inside your view components, you query the GraphQL API to get the information you need inside of it. And that's all loaded as soon as the app starts up. Now, if your data changes, then you'll need to stop and restart the app so it grabs the information again. That's the only kind of caveat when you're using GraphQL and you're using Gridsum or something like Gatsby. And so you can see out of the box, if we do a query, we can use all the GraphQL goodness with this playground so we can kind of play around with it. You can see what pages it comes with out of the box. 
I can see the path. Um, in this case, there's no extra. We'll just run it here. You can see here's the path is 404. There's a default root and about. So these are what's coming out of it. Cool. But we want to see if we can pull data from this Google Sheets that we have right here. So let's do a quick tour of the different folders. So the way it works is every single page is a different route, just like you have in NUX. So there's an about route and the index is essentially the root route or the slash route. And inside index, if you click on it, you see there's this layout. This is coming from the layouts in this layouts folder. And that's the, um, since we have it set up here, we have this main. If you look inside main here, it's the main, the route, the default route is called default layout. So that, that in that case, it's actually using the layout's default one right here. And so this, and it has a slot right here. So essentially this is wrapping around your whole app. So you can create multiple different layouts. Like let's say this one has the header in here, but maybe you want to add a footer, like maybe a header and footer, and then have all your content wrapped in it. Or maybe there's different parts of your site. So you create different layouts. And then inside the pages, these are actually the actual like pages. So this would be like the index page, the, the root page, and then you have an about and you can create multiple pages. And then components are be, would be, as I described here, will be imported into pages and layouts. So you that's probably the best way to do it. So if you have smaller, or it doesn't matter what is, like components that you want to add into different uh, pages or layouts, then you would create them here. And of course, there's these templates, and this is the weird one, and we're going to show you in a second how this works. But these are for the GraphQL collections. So it should be added here to create a template for a collection called WordPress, you call WordPress.view. So the what this is for is this is how you do dynamic routes inside your app. So if you wanted to have a slash one slash two, and that was dynamically generated from the GraphQL data in one of your collections, then you create it here. So we're going to do that with our WordPress site um, in a moment. But first, we need to do is we need to configure the GridSum site. So there's two files here, GridSum source and GridSum config. And since we're using plugins, we want to actually add it to this plugins ones right here. So if we go back to our website, the GridSum website, you can see under GridSum, you have a plugin. So if you click the plugin to the top and I just type in Google Sheets, it gives me an idea how to start it. So first we need to install it. So I'm going to do the npm install GridSum source Google Sheets. So I'll go ahead and stop the server for a second and we'll install it. Okay, cool. So I went ahead and installed the GridSum source Google Sheet plugin. So to get started, it says you need to add this to your plugin. So we're going to copy and paste this and we're going to restart the server in a second, but let's see if we can get it configured here. So here is what it's asking. So we got to put the plugins folder here and it's asking a few things. We need to add the sheet ID, the API key, and then this routes and types, which we're not going to worry about right now. So I'm just comment this out. But for the sheet, we can get that easily. If we go in, I already had beforehand created this sheet and there's a few things you need to do. So first, obviously, if, if you don't have a Google account, you need to get one of those. You can sign up for free. Next thing you need to do is once you go into docs.google.com, you click on the side there and you go to, to the sheets. And when you open up one of the Google Sheets, which I'm assuming you guys know how to do, you need to click on the right hand top of this and you got to change the access so it's public on the web. Otherwise, your app won't be able to find it and it won't be able to grab the information. So really this really only works with publicly accessible Excel spreadsheets. If they're not publicly accessible, then it's not going to work. Of course, you can make it so only you can edit it, but everybody will see it. And I don't think that's a big deal. As long as no nobody else can edit it, I think that's fine. So if you click share here, you have this option here. Anyone on the internet can view and f can find and view, but you can change it to anyone can edit, comment, can view. You can probably even change it to just view but not find. You could probably do a bunch of things, but you have to at least make it public so anybody on the internet can find, can uh, a view it at least. And then once you do that, it'll have here in the top, 
in the URL, there's this ID. You just need to copy it, and that'll become your Google Sheet ID. Now, the Google API key is a little bit more difficult. So if we go back to the plugin, it says you need to get the API key from here. So if you click on this link here, it's going to open an API console, and the API console is has all your different keys for that you've created. Um, so you just need to grab the key for for the one you created. So I'm going to copy this, and if you don't have it, you click Create Credentials, and you can go ahead and create it, and that'll become your Google API key, which by the nature of it is public since it's uh, it, it's in there. Now there's one other thing you need to do. Try to run this right now and you get some sort of error. It might ask, it might say that you don't have your Google Documents API turned on. It'll give you a link inside here to turn it on um, and you just have to click on it. It will be in your console. So I'm not gonna show you guys that step, but if you have a problem at this time, when you're following along with these steps, make sure it'll say inside the console the website you need to go to, and it'll basically it's a Google website that just has you turn on the Google API's access for Google Sheets. I guess it's another layer of protection that Google has. Okay, so we already let's let's see if this works. I have both the sheet ID and the API key, and I'm just gonna go ahead and run Gridsum develop and see what happens. So I got an error here. It says I need to fix it. So I think I had an extra period. Let me try it again. Still doesn't like it. Oh, it says I have an unexpected, oh, you know what I'm missing? I'm missing the ending bracket. So let's try it one more time. See if it starts. Okay, so it's initializing plugins. I'm gonna look look at this to make sure it doesn't have any errors while it runs for the first time. All right, so I got deprecation warning. Notice I wouldn't worry about that, but uh, it went ahead and did it. So it doesn't have any errors, good. So I'm gonna just go back to my playground. I'm gonna refresh it. And now I should see something different. So before I saw all pages, oops, but now I have all Google Sheets. So now I can see to make sure this works. So I go to all Google Sheets edges and then I can use node. And now you can see, oh cool, it's pulled in the name, age, date, ID belongs to. So if you want, if you look here, the way I have this set up is that this ID column is going to be my unique ID. And I'm gonna use this to determine the route that I'm gonna use. And I'm gonna use this is the the names for each column are going to be what's inside the playground and these columns so these rows excuse me is what's going to be linked together so this is one row and this is one row so this is how the api works it's going to grab these are the names the headers i created and each row will be an individual row that the playground will see and then we can have inside each route or we can just list them all in one of our pages. So let me explain that. So let's say I wanted to grab all the names and hit enter. See, so I saw two names, name is Jack and name is John. So those are the two rows I have, John and Jack. Now if I add in, let's say the age, now I see 21 and 22. And if I have the ID with capital ID, now I have one and two. So cool, so everything is working as I expected. Now, since I have this information here and it's being all pulled in, I can use this as a query and to see if it works inside my app. So let's do a little bit of cleanup. I'm gonna go back to the, I guess I'll go back to the layouts. And you know, I don't really care about, well, I'll leave these links. I'm gonna update the index instead. I'm going to hide the bar here. And you know, I don't really care for this image. The lorem ipsum text, not really care. I don't need any of these links right here. We'll keep it surrounded by the layouts. So we updated it. Now we just have this hello world at the top. Now let's see, we can actually anywhere inside our layouts or templates 
or excuse me, our layouts and pages, we can connect to our GraphQL API and display information. And to do that, you use something called page query and you always put it in between the template and the script. So we'll do page query here and we'll close it. And this now we're just using the graph query language or GQL to do a query. So the way to do that, we do query here. So if you used Apollo or something like that, it's similar. Well, essentially to make this easier, we should be able to now just grab everything in between the query here and just copy and paste it in here. So we have the query. Now we have this query for all Google Sheets, which I guess is not quite lined up correctly. Um, that looks a little better. And we don't have, I think we actually have this. We don't need this. Let's see here. So now we should have this all Google Sheet. If I, when, if I didn't mess up here with my brackets. Uh, so now we should be able to access this all Google Sheet inside the template. We don't have to declare anything. So what we want to do, I'm going to create a div. I'm going to use a V4. And I'm going to put page in. Now you have this dollar sign page. And this dollar sign page is actually this page query right here. So we should be able to access the all Google Sheet and then the edges. And remember, the edges are an array. You can see right here. So we know it's an array. And so this is accessing the array. And then, of course, we need to put a key. So we'll have it equal page.id. And now we should be able to just grab whatever we want here. So I'm going to grab the the page object, all Google Sheet, and uh, I'm, now I need to figure out what I want to grab. So I guess I'll grab the name. Oops, this is what I messed up. This is actually supposed to be page. Well, I'm just going to put page.name. Let's see if that works. Let's just put page and see if this works. Okay, so we have node name. So page.node.name. Cool. So here's our two nodes, uh, Jack and John, as we expected. Awesome. And we can also do things like, I know we can grab page node. Uh, what's the other one? Age, perhaps? Age. I think it's capital A. We'll save it. Cool. Now we have Jack, Jack 21, John 22. So we're pulling the data from the Google Sheet into this page. Awesome. So I want to show you one more thing, and that's how do we maybe add these to its own route? And so what we want to do, if we looked at the documentation again, it mentioned something about uh, to use data in a, in a query, in a template, you have to use Google Sheet.view. And actually, this is not capitalized. I think this is a, a typo that's actually lowercase Google Sheet.view. So if we go to templates, we create a new file. We'll call it Google Sheet.view. And now inside here is where we're going to create a basic layout. So I'm going to create a template. Let's see if I can do this right. There it is. And I'll create a layout. I think it's capital layout. I'll close it out here. And I'm going to put a div test. And then I guess. What we can do, well, you know what, let's do this. Let's do an H3 test route. And then we're going to have a div. And this one, we're going to do another query. And we're just going to grab the page that Google Sheet. Google Sheet. And we'll just grab the name. And I'll add a script tag to the bottom. But really, now we just need to add our page query. So we'll add page query here and we'll do a query and we'll do it. We'll clear, call it query sheet, I guess. And this time we'll put a path and it's going to be type string. And so what this is saying right here is that we're going to look at the path that is coming from the URL and then we're going to run Google sheet 
and we're going to pass that path on to here. And then we're going to return something. So we're going to return name. And that should give us the routes that we want. Uh, let's just, in case, we'll stop and restart. OK, so there's one more thing we have to do to make this work, this template here. And that is to actually uh, set up one more thing. And that's the routes in the config file for the plugin. So remember how before we set this up, we just commented out this route. So now we need to uncomment it out. Make sure we have a comma at the end here. And where it says optional route, this is going to be the dynamic route that we set up, but with also the name of the column that we want it to be dynamic. So in this case, if we go back to the YouTube demo, we call this ID with a capital I. So we just put ID right here. We'll save it. And this actually should be right here. This colon slash ID. And so this means anything with the ID will now be a dynamic route. So I'll just stop and restart the server. And it'll go ahead and grab the information back again from our Google Sheet. And once it's done building, we should see if it works. So we have our hello world. Remember, we got the two values here. And now we can do slash one. Cool, here's John slash two, Jack. So now we are using dynamic data to grab our information and add these two new routes. Now you'll probably notice a weird issue. If I do slash two and hit enter, uh, okay, so everything's working right. Just wanna make sure. Um, I saw in the past that if you use strings, sometimes you have weird issues. You might have to put a closing slash. I don't know why, but I've had that happen once. Um, and also, these are just normal routes that you can use inside your app. So if you go back to here, and let's, let's say we want to add a third route in here. So I have an about, but I want to add in, I don't know, slash one. And I'll just call it one. These G dash links, by the way, inside GridSum, they're called G dash links instead of like, you know, the router link that you might see in a normal view app. So now I have a one here. If I click one, it goes to the John route. It goes to this route, this dynamic route created about home. Cool. So let's say we added a third one. How about, uh, I don't know, Alice. And she's 25, 12, 22, 25. She's going to be route three. And you wanted to see, um, you wanted to take a look at Alice instead. And I don't know, let's go back to the template. And right now we're just grabbing the name, but let's, let's grab the, let's see here, we called it the date. Let's just grab the date too. And I'll make another one. I don't know, let's make it, let's H3 this. And we're going to grab the date. Oops. That's what I want to do, the date. And you can see if I do this right now, and I go to slash one, I have this, but if I go to slash three, I get a 404 that's not found because right now it's not found. So that's obviously wrong. So to change that, uh, we actually have to stop and restart the server because anytime you make changes to the data, you have to stop and restart the server for it to like grab the data again and put it in the GraphQL database. So if we stop and restart it, it's restarted. Now, if I refresh it, if I go to slash three, cool, here's Alice's information. All right, so that's that's all I wanted to show you. I guess I can show you one more thing. If you go grid some build, it'll go ahead and build it. And we'll take a look at that in here in one second. All right, so we went ahead and build it. Now, if you look at this new folder, we have a dist folder. And you can see here that we have this 1, 2, 3, and it has a 404 index, index, index.html. So if I go to the dist folder, and I don't know, if I run HTTP server, uh, I don't know, 8084. This is a NPM globally installed app that I installed that just creates a really basic server. So if I go to um, port localhost 8084, now this is the actual website. And if I look at the inspect on here, you could see and look at this view source, it's actually rendering the HTML. This is not something that's being, this is not uh, being server rendered, or excuse me, it is being server rendered 
in the way that it's not being client side rendered. This is not a big JavaScript app. This is going to be instantaneous for this whole app to load. All these routes, if I click on one here, um, these are all pages, actual HTML pages. So it just makes it really quick for it to just instantly open it up and view it. And you can tell because if you go and look at the directories, you have a one directory, a two directory, and a three directory. So that's how it statically creates the whole app for you. So that's why it makes it really quick and really fast. But it also means you can't get dynamic data from the Google Sheet at this point because it's all like in there. It just created it all for you. Okay, so that's all I had to show you guys today. If you have any questions, grid some, leave a comment below. Thanks.